our first speaker is Joe Rea. Uh, I hope I got that right. He's the commercial chief commercial officer of ABAX Exchange, a Singapore-based commodities futures exchange uh, focused on carbon neutrality and the sustainability of global commodity products. And uh, Joe, I'll let you take it away. Yep. Thanks, Thanks Rob. And you did get the pronunciation correct, which is uh, which is great. Um, and I did want to start off just thanking Peter, <clears throat> Peter Vassar for many years of friendship and the business relationship that we've had. You know, it's obviously an honor and a privilege to be presenting here at your 20th annual uh, Wall Street Green Summit, Peter. I think I remember pretty vividly when you started this off 20 years ago. So uh, congratulations. It's really a testament to your, to your real uh, dedication to this marketplace. And uh, again, we're really thrilled as ABEX Exchange now versus the other uh, exchanges that I worked for in the past to participate in this. And, and thanks to you, Rob, for the, the kind introduction and for, for hosting this session. Um, I did want to start off by giving everybody, uh, probably many don't know, although I did see there was a few investors uh, that are on this, on the call, and the, which is great. Um, but I did want to start off by giving everyone a bit of background on ABEX, what our vision is uh, and motivation for developing um, these new capital markets, which we see so important uh, in, in the growing uh, economy of uh, global economy. Uh, so first off, ABEX Technologies is the parent of ABEX Exchange. Uh, both were founded um, with a vision on how capital markets and finance will be transformed by new emerging technologies in both trading and clearing, and particularly in trading and clearing in futures markets. Uh, it's important to mention that ABEX Technologies, uh, the parent of the exchange, it's a publicly traded uh, and publicly listed firm. We're traded on the Canadian NEO uh, stock exchange under the ticker ABXX, and also on the OTCQX markets under the ticker ABXXF. And certainly, if you want more information about that, you can reach out to me about, about the firm and uh, about how to trade the, uh, the equity of the firm. Um, so early on in the development of ABEX uh, as a company and a marketplace, we rec recognize the distinct need in today's global commodity markets for better technology, technological and financial infrastructure to support the energy transition. Everybody talks about energy transition. How do you do it? It's really uh, important to focus on both aspects on the technology and the financial side. Uh, so hence our move to develop a discussion with industry leaders on how we can create what we call smarter markets. Uh, we believe that entrepreneurs and capitalism can solve the world's problems faster than governments can, maybe not to out there, but uh, we also believe that, that a pragmatic approach and a pragmatic market-based solutions approach should be used to solve these socio-economic uh, issues that we see today. Um, we're here to help as Apex Exchange, the market participants to measure, to manage and realize the true economic value, uh, both in cost and benefits to the sustainable business uh, in, in what we do. Um, and so as we uh, you know, go down the road of, of developing our futures contracts, we believe that the pricing of ESG externalities are an inevitable are inevitable in commodity supply chains, and we've experienced the big tech follow uh, follow the leader and follow the lead of saying in, in fair trade coffee and the promotion of social responsible mining. Certainly, something that we've we've seen over the past few years, both in uh, in the coffee side and also even in diamonds and and other base metals minings. Um, there's there's three trends that we believe are really changing the economic and technology landscape of both the exchange and commodity markets. And the first one is uh, in, in what we call energy transition, everybody calls energy transition. Uh, we believe global LNG demand is expected to grow uh, by over 188 million tons every year up to the year 2030, quite a, quite a significant uh, growth with a lot of that growth going and destined for, uh, for Asia markets. Um, we know that LNG will be a transition fuel for the foreseeable future. In fact, I think as everybody knows last week, the EU stated that it cannot get to net zero without natural gas and LNG playing a role in that uh, transition. So the massive growth in LNG infrastructure to more dynamic standards of trade has really set the stage for us to offer risk management tools and LNG and other important transition commodities that we think will assist in the transition to cleaner, cleaner fuels like LNG in the near term and to further the fully sustainable and renewable energy sources along the road to, net, to the net zero finish line. The second trend that we believe is changing the landscape is uh, ESG investing towards renewable energy. I, I listened to some of the panels this morning on ESG and, and, and sustainable investing, and I think, I, I think I heard mention, and we also know that ESG-related investments are expected to grow past $100 trillion by 2030, so certainly a big uh, vote in that marketplace. 
The problem though, investing in renewable energies is currently very high risk for investors, high profile for investment banks, and is really creating a lack of liquidity in the market for green energies. Financial institutions, as we now are now know, are now scoring their investments in firms by how closely they adhere on that scoring, right? They, they adhere to strict ESG mandates. They want the firms they're lending to to adhere to these mandates. And they're adjusting the lending rates as time goes on based on that scoring and adjusting them very rapidly. So we need a marketplace for capital inflows through derivatives like secure regulated futures marketplace. It will definitely play a big role in the future. The third thing that we see as a, as a, as a trend in the marketplace is a distinct need for technological innovation in traditional futures markets. Peter, as you know, futures markets go back a long ways and really not much in the way of technology has been added to that marketplace for, for pretty much the, the life cycle of, of the futures marketplace. The problem is also a lack of standardization in ESG scoring, as I just mentioned, and also in reporting, and also in the verification in the actual true price uh, or cost of carbon emissions and offsets that makes trusted benchmarks difficult to develop and complex to track and trace. What scope one or two for one firm can really be a scope three for another. Most current markets are relying on over-the-counter bulletin boards for trading of carbon offsets with little or no regulatory oversight on the product, the risk management, and the certainty of transactions. So the development of regulated futures markets is critically important. And with that, those develop, that this development will bring certainty of risk management. But as we know, and as you know, Peter, through all the developments of things like green exchange, it's not quick nor it's not inexpensive. However, the ABEX team has set its sights on launching a new regulated futures marketplace that will bring price discovery, price transparency, and economic certainty, and, and most importantly, better risk management tools to this important uh, marketplace. So a, there really is, as we see, an enormous opportunity to combine the energy, energy transition with tech-driven solutions for ESG. Global exchanges across, across the world are the largest allocators of liquidity into commodity markets, but we still need to develop the tools to manage risk, develop more precise benchmarks and effectively organize uh, these marketplaces. But this is not obviously limited to hydrocarbon or electricity markets, but has broad ramifications across all asset classes and commodity markets, including all the raw materials that we know will go into the infrastructure required for pure renewable energy and storage and ultimately the goal to net zero. So market facts are telling us that government mandates and corporate initiatives are increasing to achieve global climate goals. The transition in power generation, for example, as we know from coal and oil to cleaner burning natural gas and renewable uh, energy is rapidly increasing. There is a paradigm shift for sure in, in consumer behavior to more conscious, conscious consumption and sourcing of power generation. Demands also in precious and base and battery metals need to support energy transition for the production of solar panels, wind and other power turbines and distribution systems for that new power generation is growing. However, with the need for more sustainable and social, socially responsible mining of these products. So the Apex team has been involved since inception in 2018 and in, in, involved in building markets, uh, but also have been, we've been involved in building markets for decades. Most of us have either worked at global exchanges and or in financial markets that are involved in exchanges. Earlier moves in the development of environment markets and environmental markets were exactly that, too early, but as we know, the time is now. I initially connect, connected with you, Peter, during our build out and the launch of the Green Exchange at the NYMEX back in 2007 and 2008, certainly ahead of our time, but somewhat, uh, but uh, definitely ahead of our time. But we were addressing a different demand at that time to help remove particulates from the US power generation stack via this trading of NOx and stock, socks. It worked then, and we know that our development of new SG related marketplaces can make it happen again. In addition, Peter in his keynote uh, address on Monday stated, markets like simplicity for replication of trade. And that's where ABEX is providing leadership and will play an integral role. Our market and tools are designed to standardize and simplify and allow you to avoid duplicative tasks, making it more efficient to find liquidity in the goods that you need to achieve your business goals in a sustainable way with a particular focus on the transition to sustainable sourcing of energy and metals, two industries that Peter referred to as worse and close second. So why a focus initially on LNG? In our work early on in the process, the market told us and we agreed that the mar global markets needed not only a better LNG benchmark, but one that included a responsibility factor. The physical LNG markets told us 
It needs a responsibility design physical instrument where the exchange serves as the buyer and seller of last resort, really the foundation of all global futures exchanges. Market participants have told us that past attempts at physical LNG futures contracts were incorrectly designed with little or no success. And in fact, most LNG, in, in most LNG markets for many years, it was priced on non-correlated instruments such as Brent crude oil, the JCC contract, which is just a Japanese crude contract, and most recently JKM, a financially settled index instrument with little or no convergence into physical markets. Crude oil, accordingly to one, uh, crude oil at pricing in LNG, according to one industry analyst just the other day, was pricing over 60% of all global LNG marketplaces. So when you add the carbon offset aspect to this new and developed marketplace, we took a real, not really a non-traditional approach for offsetting this complex, complex risk. We like to describe it as not wanting to be the referee in the process, but rather the scorekeeper uh, and will support market participants, enabling them to integrate relevant carbon market offset solutions to manage their carbon footprint of their respective LNG portfolios. So to close, ABEX is building smarter markets with new trusted benchmarks for price discovery that will capture the energy transition by launching a regulated commodity exchange for the global LNG and carbon offset marketplace. This new marketplace will combine new technologies and improve business practices towards our common goals of meaningful change to these important global markets. So thanks again, Peter, for allowing myself and ABEX to participate uh, in, the, in your conference in your 20th year. And I'll stop there and look forward to any, any questions that uh, anyone would have. Thanks, Joe. Um, I have a couple of questions teed up and it looks like we're already getting some stuff in the Q&A. Again, for our, our audience, uh, please send any questions for, for Joe through the Q&A, not the chat. Uh, but before we even dive into some of those, um, I know the financial side of things pretty well, but you brought up um, you know, the regulated side of, of where you're going. And, and could you give a little bit more insight broadly on, a part on futures market and commodities um, and you know, most people are familiar with the Dow and the stock, stock market in general. And I think um, a lot of people, to your point, you know the markets and you know how important futures can be for addressing some of these externalities. But um, even commodities, and I think you brought, to, brought it up, you know, most people don't realize that's not under the SEC. Uh, and it's regulated, I believe, under the Agriculture Department or the FTC because of... Yeah. Uh, because because of its long history with grain and other and other agricultural commodities, so um, you know one of the things that people tend not to realize of, of where some of these things may fall or where regulatory might come in. So you need a little broader thing of on futures and how that can really play in the in the energy in some of these markets. Because I think uh, you know as I said, it's it's something that um, not everyone can be aware of, and I think there's a lot of areas of the market that'll touch uh, for for ESG that people just aren't aware of. Yeah, it's, it's, thanks, Rob. And it's really, a, I mean, I guess Frank probably speak two days on futures markets. Uh, <laughs> and it's, uh, it really is, it's complex. Um, you know, when we, when, when we went down the road back in the day when the NYMEX was going public and I participated in, in all the deal calls with the banking firms, we spent so much time just describing how futures markets work, how they're regulated. And the same thing here, when ABEX went public, we spent a lot of time with investment banking uh, participants and telling them exactly how we are different than equity markets and how we're regulated and how futures contracts work. And to your point, it does go back to the agricultural markets back in Chicago, back in New York, back in the late 1800s. Um, I always like to, to say that the, when I had interns at the NYMEX during my day, the best thing for them to do was to sit down and watch Trading Places. That kind of <laughs> describes the most contemporary movie with Eddie Murphy. It does really, in all seriousness, give uh, give you know students in college and in an educational way uh, under, an understanding of for a very very you know initial understanding of how futures markets work and really that's how it works. But to your point and question, um, we are regulated by well at least in the U.S. markets are regulated by the CFTC. ABAX uh, we've chosen to uh, right, to file our exchange and clearinghouse licenses under the MAS in Singapore. Uh, we feel that MAS is as progressive as any regula regulatory body on, for, for commodity futures markets uh, or any futures markets. Uh, and in fact, does require us to have more skin in the game as a clearinghouse than the CFTC or the FCA does. So we feel that the market participants, the clearing members uh, will have better protection under an MAS regulatory regime than, than say maybe others. Um, but uh, we do, uh, we, the futures markets work where a buyer or seller comes in and again, going back to grain marks and not to get too 
too detailed, but just or frozen I, concentrated orange juice if oh, you prefer. FCOJ, FCOJ, right? Exactly. It's it's the same thing. Whether it's and most contracts are monthly contracts, although the exchanges over the years have developed a lot of different derivative contracts on dailies and weeklies, and a lot of the contracts I launched that during my years at the NYMEX really broadened out. Um, the uh, you know the, the product base. I think the most important thing to understand, and maybe I'll leave it at this, is that risk management is important, right? So the buyer and seller of last resort that I mentioned, under the futures marketplace, you have a, a pre, uh, you 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 have a determined buyer or seller of last resort. If you show up to a port with a cargo of LNG and it's a futures contract, you could have certainty that that cargo is going to be sold as a as a as a contract. Whereas the OTC marketplace, you have risk bilateral risk. With your counterparty, that uh, that if the firm like Avenron did back in the day, blew up, you do have direct exposure to that counterparty. And so, in futures marketplace, there's there's a series of checks and balances through margin, through clearing members that manage the risk of their customers to really uh, make more certain that risk management tool. And that's really what it's all about is risk management and something different than the OTC markets uh, offer. I, I think that's actually a, a really good helpful. Uh framework for people to understand uh, of managing the both sides of the transaction, uh, the LNG at the port, so to speak. Um, and it also, I think, addressed uh, in in my head, uh, or one of the questions I had of Singapore, why, why Singapore? Um, so that's very helpful. And, but your, your uh, bring up LNG, I have some following questions about that, but Joe uh, Bezrelian from the audience brought up explaining how an LNG carbon offset system works. So I think that since you just brought that up as, you know, what shows up in the report, uh, maybe that this can be a secondary follow on to that. Yeah, for, um, for, the, for, the, uh, for our carbon, well, certainly our futures contract is gonna stand alone, but we will allow the marketplace, uh, just in the very simple answer to the question, we will allow the marketplace to utilize the current systems that are in place for offsetting that carbon uh, uh, for that LNG cargo, right? So right now, as most of the uh, market participants in, in, in carbon know, there's a, very, there's, a, there's a wide variety of registries that they can go to mostly nature-based solutions to, uh, to source their carbon offsets. We're saying to the marketplace, again, going to that uh, scorekeeper, scorekeeper versus referee mm -hmm. uh, analogy that I made uh, or in, in my remarks, that we, we want to let the marketplace choose where they want to go to to offset that cargo. If, as I said, if a, a scope one and two to a supplier is one, you know, they need a certain amount of carbon offsets for that particular cargo, that may mean a certain, a different um, set of carbon offsets and that they may have to buy on the, uh, on the selling side for the receiver to, to cover scope three. So there's a lot of variances there, but we're saying to the marketplace, we're not embedding that carbon offset in the LNG futures contract. We're, we're letting them determine where they want to go to, uh, to buy and sell those offsets. Got it. Well, unfortunately, that is all of the time that we have at the moment. So, um, Joe, if you want to give everyone your contact info, you can also post that in the chat. I know that'll probably go around afterwards. Um, but, Joe, thank you so much for, for the time. Uh, can't wait to hear more about how ABEX uh, continues to uh, make a difference in, in addressing a lot of these externalities. So, appreciate all the work you're doing. I look forward to talking more with you more later. Yep. Thanks for having me. I'll post my email address in the uh, chat. Thanks, Peter. Great. Great. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Rob.